This video is only part of an unpaid, unbiased, in-depth review from an average rider's perspective, so check out the rest in the link below at thegoodride.com. If this video helps, please consider subscribing and buying through our links, or even better, become a member on YouTube or Patreon. You'll get exclusive access to video review shorts as we test gear along with a lot of other perks. So thanks for watching, and I hope this review helps. Welcome to The Good Ride, where I've been geeking on gear year over year for too many years to count now. I'm James Beastie, and this is the Jones Ultra Mind Expander 2023. Next to it is the new Mind Expander for 2023. And don't mind the top sheet. This is a demo model. The production model is going to have gloss over it and look massively better. Next to it is a board that's very similar. Not the same, but very similar. The Cardiff Pagoda. this is a 58, but when I rode these two in 54, I compared it against a 55, thanks to Mason at Gravity Sports, so it was more apples to apples. And then next to that is the Manta Ray 56.5, which actually matches up a little bit better with the Mind Expander 58s and the Pagoda 58, but I've ridden those in the past in Ultra and regular Mind Expander owned a regular mind expander when it was flat to rocker. So I'll be referencing those two here and there, and this will be a comparison primarily against the ultra mind expander versus the new mind expander, but those will be mentioned as well. I rode this primarily with Union Atlas and Burton Kendos. I did get some time on the Jones Christensen bindings as well just to see how it works with Jones. I've gotten this in a wide variety of conditions over the years and throughout this season. And I'm redoing this review because the Jones Mind Expander changed a lot. New camber profile, uh, slightly different construction it seems like, but the Ultra Mind Expander changed too. It seems to be more like the Ultra Craft and the Ultra Flagship now, where it has more of a lighter, poppier construction. So my perspective has changed over the past reviews when it was a little stiffer and a little damper. To give you a short summary, this Ultra Mind Expander is lighter, poppier, more dynamic than it was in the past. And I think that's good for some and bad for others. It depends on what kind of rider you are. If you like that lighter, poppier ride and you're okay with a little more chatter in uneven snow, you're gonna love this. If you want something a little more damp and a little more all conditions, but not quite as poppy and dynamic, you have the regular Mind Expander now, which has a lot of camber from the front binding almost to the tail. The new Mind Expander feels like the older Ultra Mind Expander. If you want something a little more turny, a little more floaty and powder, maybe a little less carvy on groomers, but only by a little bit, you have the Pagoda. And then if you want something with an even faster base than all of these, you have the Gentem Stick Manta Ray, a little less camber, a little softer, a little more playful, a little more artful with the turn, where the three to the right of the Manta Ray, the Pagoda, the Mind Expander, and the Ultra Mind Expander, seem to have more of that US style, more aggressive style ride versus the more careful, articulate Japanese style. Now, when it comes to sizing, I used to say the 54 Ultra Mind Expander was for me. I like that better than the 58. With the new construction, I'm leaning more towards the 58 now. I think that's a much better fit for me. This 54 just felt too small and too bucky for my 185 pounds. Felt fine for my size nine boots and my 510 frame. That was okay, but now it's, it's definitely the 158. That felt like the right call. And same with the 54 Mind Expander. I tried that in a 54 and a 62. I didn't get the model I wanted, but I'm stoked to get to try both of them. And the 58 would be perfect for me in 
the regular Mind Expander for 2023 as well. The Card of Palgoda fit great in 58, but the 55 rode a little better for me than these two in 54, but that's probably because it's a little softer flex, so it dealt with the uneven terrain I was riding in a lot better. I think that's why, but these are stiffer and like more aggressive, so they were a little more cranky in uneven terrain. You take cranky and small, that's a bad combo. The Gentum Stick Manta Ray is just perfect in a 56.5 for me. Love that board, but it's massively more expensive. When it comes to shape, this is tapered and directional. It's got about 18 mil of taper. I would say it kind of lives in that border ground world between alternative free ride and free ride. It's a little more on the free ride side, but it's something that rides a little more setback, a little more directional than your average free ride board, but it's not super setback. It's not super short and wide either, like a lot of the alternative free ride boards. And it has a lot of back foot weighted needs. And it does like a posi stance a little bit more than a slightly duck stance, like 18, negative three. It's happier with, let's say like 21 plus three or, you know, 24 plus six, that kind of thing. I think that's where the, the mind expanders light up. The Pogoda's a little more stance with agnostic, but again, it does like a slightly positive stance. And the Gentum stick is stance with agnostic too. You can ride it slightly duck, but it does shine a little bit more if you set it up just a little bit posy. It's not like some of those ultra surfy Gentum sticks out there. So when it comes to camber, there is a good bit of camber going well past the back binding inserts and well past the front binding inserts. Then there's a little early rise and some spoon tech in the nose. You don't really feel the spoon tech on a turn until the snow gets softer, and I actually really like that. Sometimes it can be really weird when you're making turns and the lifted sides are, are extended too much into the effective edge, and it can feel edgeless and washy in certain conditions. This never does. I've taken this out in all kinds of snow from hard, to medium snow, it never washes or feels weird unless you don't back foot weight it enough. The regular Mind Expander this year has the same camber profile. In comparison to the Cardiff Pagoda, there's camber more from the beginning of the back insert right here, all the way almost to the tail, and it's a pretty healthy bow, so it's almost there with the Ultra Mind Expander and Mind Expander, but not quite. It's not as much camber, but it still feels very good on a carve. The Gentum Stick has a just very mellow camber. It depends on the board you get, but mine looks almost flat, but it has such a satisfying turn that I don't even notice that it doesn't have that much camber. Now, when it comes to edge hold, the Jones boards do very well because they have a disrupted side cut. If I was on a 58 in both of these, the Ultra Mind Expander and Mind Expander, the edge hold would be much better. But what surprised me is the Pogoda has some slightly disrupted side cut. And on the 55 Pogoda, same day riding with the Mind Expander and Ultra Mind Expander, I found that the Pogoda was gripping a little bit better. But I think that's just because it was more of a damp ride in those conditions. It held the edge better without bucking, where these both, this bucked the most and this bucked the second most. And then the Gentum Stick Manta Ray, I don't know what they're doing there, but that grips just as well, even though it doesn't seem to have any kind of disruption in the side cut. Now, let's talk flex here. This is a stiff flex. It is very stiff right between the feet, I would say stiff, stiff. And then it's <laughs> still very stiff, maybe more medium stiff going on stiff. And let's just do it this way. Down at the tail here is very stiff. Now with the regular Mind Expander, it's definitely more in the medium stiff bordering on stiff range. Very, still very stiff between the feet, but it definitely softens up a little more in the tail and it's a touch 
softer in the tail than it is in the center, but it's still massively stiffer than the nose. In comparison to the Palgoda, much more flex. This is medium bordering on medium stiff. Nose is a little bit softer than between the feet here. And the tail's pretty stiff too, more in line with the middle. And then, oh, you beautiful manta ray. You can see, a little stiffer than the Palgoda, but not by much. And between the feet, pretty stiff. The tail is a little softer. The nose is even softer. So even though the Jones Ultra Mind Expander has this really stiff flex, it's got so much pop and taking the same run, same boots, same bindings with the Jones Mind Expander next to it, I just noticed it made my micro jumps a little less micro. Everything just felt enhanced. Unfortunately, the chatter felt enhanced too, but when I was in good clean snow, the way this popped was exceptional. And the way it turned, it, there's just a little more spring out of the turn, a little more pop on an ollie. And for some reason, it's doable on a butter, but far from ideal. So you have to ask yourself, what's more important? A board that shines in good snow and pops harder, springs out of a turn more, or a board that does much better when the conditions start to turn, but you still want to ride. So that's a question I put to you. For me personally, I like the regular Mind Expander because of the all conditions ride, but gosh, I wish this just had a little more dampness and that kind of pop. And if you compare it to the Palgoda, I felt the Palgoda was better in uneven snow than both these boards because of that softer flex. It can just absorb and bend and hold its edge a little better in uneven snow in a 55. If these were all 58s, it would be a little closer, but it would still go to the Palgoda. The same kind of goes for the Gentum stick, but the Gentum stick feels a little more in uneven snow, feels just a little more bouncy because it just likes a little bit lighter rider than these boards. But you know, all three of the regulars do well. Now the Carbon Palgoda would probably, they have a Palgoda Pro Carbon and that's poppy and lighter and less damp, but still a little more damp than a lot of ultra boards out there. And it really surprised me. The reason why I know that is because I have the Palgoda 58 in a split Pro Carbon. And that thing does pretty well for an ultra light board, but that's at a higher price point, I think, than even the Ultra Mind Expander. Now, when it comes to speed and base glide, all these boards shine. They're all at the top of the class and, and we're just dealing with like Gentum stick in good snow to powder, probably the fastest of all these bases. Then you have the Ultra Mind Expander next and then the Mind Expander and the Palgoda are about right there. They just have excellent bases too. I just really don't think it matters at this point because you're just talking about shades of excellent with all of these boards. When well waxed, these things just have exceptional glide and I love it. Now, when it comes to speed, I would say the Mind Expander in my size of 58 would probably be the fastest of these boards if you really like to go big and you really like to point it, but you still want to have a turny experience that's much more turny than let's say the flagship or the hovercraft or something like that in their line or the Stormwolf. It has that characteristic pointy feel that's so prevalent in so many of Jones's boards, but it's way more turny than most Jones boards that's something that's gonna have appeal to a lot of riders. I would say the Palgoda is next. So even though it's softer and the nose clown shoes a little bit because of all that rocker, it's still pretty damp and it doesn't send that vibration up into your joints, into your body when you're pointing it. And then the Manta Ray, that's the 56.5 for the US. That's probably the least damp. That's the board you wanna make slow, careful, articulate, beautiful turns with versus these. But these can slow down and do that as well, just not as well as the Manta Ray. And when it comes to turning and carving, this Ultra Mind Expander 
has just such a nice pop and spring out of the turn. The turn initiation is quick edge to edge too. If you see a lot of tight tree lines, this is gonna be one of the better Jones boards in the line. Same with the Mind Expander, because they're the same shape. They initiate the turn almost the same. I'd say it's a touch faster just because this is a little more poppy. So it's just like a fraction of a second faster edge to edge, but overall it's kind of the same. And then when you get it on edge, and you engage all that camber, it really springs out of the turn well. I was surprised at how close the Pagoda was to these boards with less camber, more backseat camber uh, from just about here to the tail. You lean back, all these boards you wanna lean back into the tail more when you turn. And when you do that, it really springs out of the turn. And these are definitely on the turny side. The Pagoda is way more turny, way more slashy. The mind expanders, the especially the ultra mind expander that we're talking about, they can turn across the groomers and circle carve really well, but they don't have the circle carve capability that just that tighter radius, something about the Pagoda, when you lean into it, it can really turn across the groomers and make a tighter circle carve, at least in my experience when I was riding it. And the Manta Ray is a little tighter too. Uh, but these are better for more of that balanced when you're kind of sometimes in a powerful down the line carving mood. That kind of turn shines better with the Jones Mind Expander and Ultra Mind Expander. I used to like the old Surf Rocker Mind Expander better, but now they're the same. I would say these both are great powder boards, just not exceptional. The Ultra Mind Expander and the Mind Expander, these two, when set all the way back, have very good directional float. I was looking at the setback on board and I'll pull out my phone here for this. So the Ultra Mind Expander in a 54, but it's about the same for the 58 too, just different stance width, has a negative 4.3 inch setback from center of board at a 21.25 inch stance width. I like that better than the 58 because the 58 has a wider stance width, but the setback is similar. And that is nothing to shake a stick at. It's really good. In comparison to the Manta Ray, that's 4.2 five inches back from center of board at a 20.75 inch stance width. And the Pagoda 58 is negative 4.375 at 22. And I think the, the 55 will just have a slightly narrower stance width, but a very similar setback on board. So all these boards kind of sit at the same place or a similar place on the tail, they're not super far back. There's enough tail for jumps and landings and to kind of stabilize you through turning and powder in comparison to let's say the Storm Chaser or other boards like that. I would say of all these though, the Pow Goat is the one I wanna be on because it has so much rocker that starts before the front binding and goes all the way up to the nose. So that still has a little bit of the float. It was very close to the old Mind Expander that was just basically a small flat between the feet and a massive rocker up through the nose. That's the one I wanna be on in the deeper powder of all these. The Gentum Stick, surprisingly, probably the least. There are so many other better Gentum Stick boards for powder, but this is no slouch at all. And when it comes to the Mind Expanders, they're exceptional too. So really good directional float. I've ridden this in older models in a lot more powder than I did this year. They did really well uh, for a 54 and a 58. They, they float well. So overall, this has been a long review, but so many people are asking me about all these boards. They're all very similar, far from being the same. They all have different ways that they shine. And the Pagoda and the Mind Expanders definitely had some inspiration from the Manta Rays and the Ray series of Gintam Stick. They've been around forever, but they're definitely not like that board at all. They all shine in their own way. So it just depends on what appeals to you most. Giving advice on YouTube is very difficult because I need a lot of info from you to actually help. 
So if you want real advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the link below so I can help you properly.